Hello, and welcome back. It is me, and your little Bobsters. As you can see, he is wearing a little sweater, because it is a ripe negative 22 degrees outside right now. And later in the day, it is supposed to get up to a ripe negative 54 degrees. Can't wait. Cool. So, as most of you theater nerds, uh, which I know a lot of you who watch these videos are, last weekend we were blessed with a little Rent Live on Fox. And today, we are just here shooting a little video, spilling some tea, sis, talking about this Rent Live that was not so live. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So, my number five for the worst thing in this production was I felt that the cast just had no connection to their characters, or the script, if that makes sense. I felt like some of them did, and for some of it it was okay, but for some of the characters I just feel like they were there getting paid. They didn't have a connection, they were just there to get a job, they were there to collect a paycheck, and that's it. My number five for the top is the stage. I loved the stage, I loved how it was designed, I loved everything about the stage. My number four for the worst on this list, this one's a tie, the more that I'm thinking about it. I really hated, A, how many commercials they had, and B, where they placed the commercials, because I feel like some of the commercial pla placements were in climaxes of the script or the show. I feel like there was places that were made for commercial breaks that they did just didn't put them there. So it was super weird. But then tying in kind of with that, I also hated how big of an audience they had because I felt like the audience, and a lot of times this is true in regular theater as well, the audience really doesn't know when to clap and when to stop clapping. And so I feel like in some parts of the show, it really just killed the scene, especially when, um, towards the end, when Mark is talking to Roger during, um, I can't think of the name. It's true, you sold your guitar and bought Maybe. a car. It's true, I'm leaving now for Santa Fe. What's that song? So, in the beginning of Goodbye Love, which you just heard me sing an awkward amount of, the audience didn't know when to stop clapping, and Jordan Fisher just kept on a singing. So they clapped right over his singing to the point where you couldn't even understand what he was saying. So that was rough. Number four in the top half of my experience with Rent Live. And I would have to say my number four is the actor who plays Collins. Brandon Victor Dixon. You did a wonderful job as Collins. But he was incredible. His voice was perfect. In the I'll Cover You reprise, I was dying. I cried. I got goosebumps. It was incredible. That's all I need to say because it was great. My number three for the worst was how rough it started. It started so bad. It was to the point where we sat down to watch it and I turned to Logan and I was like, this is gonna be awful. Here's my issue. Because Brennan got hurt and they used the pre-recorded dress rehearsal, things were not how they could have been. And that's the rough part is like, as an audience, we know it might have been a little better if they would have done it live. But, for example, and this is no tea, no shade, I still love her, Tanache, in the first, like, two songs she sang, sounded terrified. Terrified? Tanache, in her first couple of songs, sounded terrified. And then she really got that power behind her voice during Out Tonight is when she really, like, started blossoming. And let me tell you, the first little bit of Out Tonight, when she was singing her Awoos, those were, those were a little rough. I will come for those. But the rest, from then on, was incredible. And then when her and um, Brennan were singing, the scene where they were in the elevator and going up, 
their voices just match perfectly. I don't remember exactly what scene that was, but their voices matched really well, and that was the whole point of that two-minute conversation of me trying to figure out what scene they matched really well in. My number three for the tops is the choreography. The choreography was incredible, especially my favorite number was La Vie Bohème. It was so good. I'm mad how they cut out the waiter in La Vie Bohème because that's the best part of that song, but I get it. Not everyone loves meatless balls, but I thought the choreography throughout the entire show, but specifically that show, that number was fantastic. I loved it. I really want to look into who the choreographer was. My number two for the worst was the sound mixing, which I had already mentioned. And again, this might just be because it was a dress rehearsal, so they didn't get to work out the final kinks. But my theory is, Fox, you had millions of dollars. That was the dress rehearsal from the night before. You should have had the money to fix all of those sound issues. The sound mixing in the beginning was awful. The sound mixing during La Vie Bohème was awful. You could hear, I think it was Brennan's character, say, wow, I'm so sweaty, and then continue to talk during it. It just, it was not good. My number two for tops is Angel's death scene. I thought that Angel's death scene, A, was the best Valentina did the entire show. But B, I thought the way it was staged, the way they used the music, the lighting cues, I thought the way, and like, uh, the scenography of it all, is that a word, scenography? That's a word. I think I've used that word in theater before. It makes me sound smart. <laughs> the way the entire scene looked was just incredible. I loved, loved, loved it. Number one worst thing I hated about Rent Live is Miss Valentina. Oh my Let me tell you, the girl started and I turned to Logan and I was like, oh my god, like she sounds really good. And he said, yeah, money and voice lessons can make anyone sound good. And that became true during Today For You, Tomorrow For Me. She sounded very good in the beginning. And then the song went on and she just progressively got worse. And then I'll Cover You was just pure cringe. Pure, pure cringe. It was so bad. Like I said, the best thing that Valentina did during the entirety of Rent Live was die. She's just not good. She's not good. She's a good queen, but she was not good in Rent Live. She did not make a good angel. She made a pretty angel. She looked the part, but she did not sing the part. She did not act the part. It was just not good. Don't come for me in my comments because I have my opinions and you have yours, and this is mine. Valentina was not good. <sighs> my number one best moment of Rent Live was, okay, again, y'all are gonna come for me in my comments, but no, I've been standing her for so long, and I'm so proud of what she did, but my number one moment was seeing Tanache in Rent Live. I understand, like I said, I even read her, her performance in the beginning was not good. I will be the first to admit, it was not good at all. But she progressively got better as the show went on. She killed it. I mean, everything after, like the middle of End Tonight On, was great. And her and Brennan's voice just me meshed perfectly. She started acting. It was really, really good. And I've been, like I said, I've been standing her for months. I didn't know I wanted Tanache as Mimi until they announced that Tanache was going to be Mimi, then it was everything I've ever wanted in my life. And I'm glad I got it. And you can all rip me apart in the comments, but guess what? I will still stand Tanache and still think she did wonderfully. So, with all that being said, let's go into my final thoughts. So, final thoughts on Rent Live. A, I think it's the best production that Fox has done in quite a while. B, if I was Fox, I would look into understudies because this is the second show now that they've had to use the pre-recorded version because of an injury. So I would really look into understudies, Fox. 
Besides that, I thought it was great. I thought bringing back the original Rent cast was a great idea for the last part of it. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see what Fox does next year. Hopefully they do something even better because I just feel like this has finally showed growth in Fox's live musicals and I hope they just continue to grow. So hopefully next year's live show, The Caliber Goes Up, hopefully they don't have to cancel it like they did Bye Bye Birdie last year. So yeah, we will see what Fox has in store for us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember, I love you. Even if I've never met you before, I still love you. No matter what your situation is, somebody out there loves you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, evening, night, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're watching this. I hope it's wonderful. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are now switching our schedule to Mondays and Fridays. So we will post a video this Friday, but then we will post a video on Monday and not Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when we do post it. And again, I hope you all have a wonderful night.